Now there's guys that have a wheelhouse, and by that I mean a certain genre of car that they love to do. And then there's guys that are fearless. And by fearless, I mean they're afraid of nothing. There's nothing that's off limits. And uh, I say this as a compliment, but the mini trucking guys are in that group because they will cut anything up and make what they want to see. And that's what I'm finding with John Wargo in the custom shop. This car should have been a restoration. I'm so glad it's not. Tell me about this car. Well, you know, it's funny that you say that. I came from a mini trucker background. That's yeah. how I kind of got into the so radical understand. paint stuff. Yeah. It makes perfect sense. Yep. Yep. It's a 1970 911T is what it started as, and it was a race car uh, for years and years. Uh, the customer I built it for, Jeff Tarter, come to me and said, hey, I've got a shell of a race car. What can we do with it? So same old scenario. I did a rendering, threw some ideas at him. Uh, originally, we started out as going to be a turbo Porsche motor, yeah. and we realized that we really couldn't get the horsepower we were hoping for, so I talked him into an LS3, of course. Of course, then, of course. You know, my thought was, is you know, the old Porsche motors used to have the side drafts and stuff like yeah. that that was yeah. cool, so I came up with the idea of, let's do stacked injection. Yeah. So we did a stacked injection system using the Holley EFI, yeah. uh, built you know, all kinds of custom uh, intake manifold parts and things like that, but we came up with a short cross ram stacked injection on an LS3 dynode, yeah. 534 horse, 543 foot pounds of torque. Very nice numbers. Obviously a transaxle with an IRS. These cars are known for their 50-50 weight bias in stock trim. What does that heavy aluminum V8 do to the weight bias in this car? Does it mess up the handling? Believe it or not, it's 34 pounds difference. That's it. That's it. That is it. So you could compensate with a little bit extra body work or, or by ballasting or something like yep. that, throwing the fuel cells in the front anyways. And as is the radiator. Yeah. Because you're going to have purists say, you ruined that car and you did everything, but you made this thing so much better. It's ridiculous. <laughs> you know how many times I've had people say you ruined that car? <laughs> I couldn't even tell you how many times. Well, but you know wrong. what? To me, this car here was probably going to sit in the junkyard or whatever. Or somebody's warehouse in a crate. I saw the picture of it as the body. You know, it's never going to be a vintage race car again. No. Your paint job is outstanding. It's a mile deep. Tell me about the process. Oh, this is Pro Spray Paint. That's whose booth we're in here at SEMA. Um, this is a base maroon Porsche color. Mm -hmm. um, I laid that down first. Then there's three coats of a prismatic pearl. And then there's three coats of a wild cherry candy over top of that. And then it's clear coated with the 8500 clear coat and then cut and buffed. Yeah. I did a little bit of accenting around the scoops, around the roof scoop, uh, the nose, the tail, stuff like that with a bronze color, and then accented the forge line wheels with a bronze center. It's not a typical two-tone, so to say, because most of the time you don't even really notice that that even has it on there. Yeah. Uh, but it does give it a little bit of classiness. My idea was race car meets you know, the Italian sports car kind of feel. Yeah. Um, and, you know, the reliability and drivability of an LS motor, there's just lots of things that I twisted together all the cool stuff that I've done over the years and pieced it together in this, you know, 2,900 pound yeah. street legal race car, basically. Yeah. You obviously don't have CNC aluminum milling equipment at your shop, but you've got an aluminum CNC diffuser. The uh, intake grills on the, the hood of this car, the bonnet, which is on the back, are CNC aluminum, but you make them out of wood. Tell me about that process. I like to do unique billet parts. I mean, as you see a lot of the big builders do, yeah. but being that I don't have that you know, ability to do it in house. Um, I make the piece out of MDF, whether it's three quarter inch, whether I glue two pieces of three quarter. Center. Exactly. Yeah. You cut it to the shape, the size you want. You can router it. You can, if you screw it up, you throw it away. Yeah. You build it again until you get what you want. Yeah. Um, like the side panels on the, the back wing, you know, I didn't know for sure the angles I wanted. So I made three different ones yeah. so that I could lay it out, set the top wing on it. And then I, once I got it, what I wanted, yeah. then I sent it to oh. Dean. Uh, he's got a CNC machine. I take him the wood and I say, transfer this into billet. And he plots it, puts it in his machine, programs the CAD, spits it out, and you have a perfect piece that's ready to polish and put on the car. Doing this for 27 years, you always come up with, how do you do it faster? How do you do it better? You know, I didn't know for sure the angles, so how else are you gonna do that? You can't just start making billet pieces, well, chuck that one away. Yeah. You know, so to do it out of the wood first, you know, you're, you're wasting $3 worth of wood. One of my favorite Eastwood products is their polyester high build primer surfacer. I use it on every build that I do now, classic restoration, whatever. What's, what are some of the things that you used of Eastwood's on, on a car like this? Oh, this is another one, a typical Midwest car. Yeah. It was rusty, rusty, rusty. Yeah. You know, uh, the whole bottom of this car has all been treated with the, you know, the, the rust treating, mm -hmm. the undercoating, uh, anything that we could do because this guy is going to drive this car. Yeah. I mean, you might look at this and go, boy, this is a full blown show car. But 
you know, a lot of these guys take them out and they play with them and yeah. they're going to get caught in the rain and they're going to get mud and yeah. junk underneath of them. And we wanted to make sure that, you know, they don't rust out on them later. Yeah. So those Eastwood products really help us to create something that in the long run is going to last these guys a long time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there again, like we talked earlier, handed down to the next person in the family. You see all the little details like molding in the emblems into the body. I was almost afraid to ask you about that. Yeah. That's very cool. So that's an embossed look. Is that uh, just filler around there? Yep. Dur yeah. Duraglass. Yep. Yeah, so Duraglass is a strong enough substrate to sure. where it's not going to crack, it's yep. not going to delamp. This is actually a piece of brake line tubing. Weld yep. it onto the hood and then just, you know, filled around. And then the front end's all uh, finished off too. Who does your interior work? I do. Yeah. Those are Willwood billet. Uh, reservoir, so it's kind of neat, gives it a little bit of a custom feel there. And these support struts were already integrated yep. into the space frame. Because of the race car, yeah. Because yep. of the race car heritage. How cool is that to turn a former race car into a street car? Yeah. Built the custom front end on it. Um, this started out, believe it or not, as a Audi TT piece. Okay. And I sectioned it. It's fiberglass, so I sectioned it up and molded it to make it fit the car. Uh, got rid of the big, large turn signals that were normally up here. Yeah put in the LED pockets. These are the JW speaker headlights. They're HID LED projector lights. Yeah. Super, super bright. Yeah. And then all the trim on the car is all nickel plated. Uh, advanced plating nickeled all the window stuff and the, the mirrors and the handles. And That's what I like about those guys. They they have a feel for what, they, they can almost sense what you want to do. Yeah. Uh, they're very intuitive when it comes to you wanting to create. And I just think look. that creates more of a look. classy look. It is. It's almost like an anodized aluminum mm -hmm. look, but it's nickel plate, so it's going to be stronger. Right. Very cool. And then all the, you know, all the vents, obviously, we cut all that. That's all made out of steel. And of course, we did the raised white letter kind of race car yep. look on the tires as well. Yep. Hey, this is Seaman. You got a pop. You know, and, and to me, there again, it kind of goes with that race car feel, you know, yeah. taking the the newest, latest technology, these lightweight forge line wheels, you know, and Continental tires that make it stick now. Yeah. You know, you, you couldn't do that in 1970. No. You, you, so now we took the technology of today yeah. to make it be a yeah. drivable race car. Yeah. The other thing that, you know, we were talking about build, you know, this was a four month build along with the other two cars. and. The material product from paints, you know, from the body fillers and things like that, you know, that we have now that are dry so much faster, the solvents dissolve yeah. so much faster. Yeah. You know, back in the lacquer days and things like that, I mean, you'd have so much shrinkage on a car, yeah. you couldn't do it as fast as we do it now. Yeah. You know, and it really makes it, you know, where if you know how to work that chemical process, yeah. you know, you can get that finish and it'll stay like that. Yeah. Well, I don't know if you remember or not, but when vehicles were transitioning from carbureted to throttle body to throttle body injection to full-on sequ sequential fuel injection, people were hollering, it's the doom of the aftermarket. It's the doom of hot rodding. There's, there's computers controlling this We can't now. use it. We, we can't, can't work on it. it. We can't work on it. Nobody's able to. Look what's happening now. Oh. You can control, you can tune your car in your iPhone. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's amazing. So, you know. Uh, you can call of... your car from 100 miles away and start it. <laughs> Exactly. So anyway, well, thank you so much for showing us around this car. Uh, well done again. Thank you. John Wargo, The Custom Shop.